in the commercial space. What are you seeing activity-wise as office has become depressed and uh, people need to market properties but perhaps are reluctant to sell at depressed prices? How is that trending right now? Yes, for sure. So uh, right now is an extremely difficult time if you're in the office sector. Uh, uh, you have uh, the highest vacancy rate ever. Uh, you have a super high phantom vacancy rate. So uh, it doesn't matter it's, uh, if space is leased but no one's occupying uh, that space. Banks will not consider that validly leased space. So hmm. uh, we're at the highest vacancy rate ever at 13.1%. And if you take phantom vacancy, we're at 50, 56 percent vacant, which is unprecedented in history. That would uh, eclipse, say, the Great Depression. Um, so obviously people uh, need to market space. Uh, uh, there are still lots of deals in the market. There are transactions happening. Uh, people think that the work from home phenomena is universal, but I have 160 million people employed in the United States, 145 million are showing up to work, a place of work every day. So 90 percent of the world is going into work and it is uh, continuing to uh, bit by bit trickle back to more and more people coming back to work. So looking at location data, uh, card swipe data, it just keeps on moving ahead. However, a lot of a trickle doesn't fill a pool very quickly. And maybe not quickly enough. And not quickly enough. For correct. certain lenders. Yes. So if I were to say to you, well, this must mean that certain regional banks that have a lot of these uh, office loans on their books are in serious trouble and the market's not paying enough attention to that, you would say what? I would find it difficult to argue with you. Um, so if you look at uh, where we are right now, I would say that the, um, the, the trend started to turn hard, hard south in 21 when people began to realize that uh, work for home was going to be more than a temporary thing and people began reevaluating. Um, so we're now in year two of a, dis of a, of a dislocation in the office markets. And um, we are, the first half of this year didn't have a lot of CMBSs uh, coming due. Second half of this year, you have a high number of CMBSs coming due. And, and into 24 and 25. So typically, uh, like if I go back to the recession of 07, uh, you began to see distress or defaults in, tw in 2009, but you didn't see liquidation really until 11, 12, 13. So we're in the very early uh, uh, stages of that. And you'll likely see things begin to develop the later half of the year. And there's no question that uh, with a 50 some percent effective vacancy rate, uh, a lot of these loans with uh, are not going to be refinanced. Very few are going to be refinanced. There's going to be some real issues. The Fed has said, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, in a formal way, pretend and extend uh, <laughs> if you believe the loan can be restructured or fixed. Mm -hmm. But I think that's going to be uh, difficult. And I think you're going to see some material defaults. One of the um, negative feedback loops that occurs, uh, we have a platform called 10X where a lot of properties are, are sell or transact online for broker terms. Uh, I saw a deal yesterday. The owner was in that office building at $35 million purchase price, uh, had a reserve of $27 million, sold it for $11 million. Wow. So we're, it's not atypical to see $0.30 cents on the dollar, $0.40 cents on the dollar right now for office buildings. And the... And the, and the um, and the, and the sort of um, self-reinforcing negative loop is that new owner will be able to step into the market and profitably market space in that office building for half the cost of the competitors, yeah. which exacerbates the pain for other folks who haven't yet got in the cycle. Okay. So there's a way to go there. Yeah, so it sounds, like, it sounds like we're on the cusp potentially of a downward spiral. Now, you also have Apartments.com and you have Homes.com, which is growing gangbusters right now and is, you know, sort of direct competitor, quickly emerging as direct comp competitor to, to Zillow and the like. What are you seeing on the residential side and how are you able to grow at a time where the market dynamics are, as one investor described to me earlier this week, kind of stagflation when it comes to housing? Well, it's a good time to be a new entrant in that market. So we acquired a couple of small, small players a year ago and rewrote all their software and we built what we believe is a much better product. 
So uh, we're the fastest growing residential border. We were maybe number six, seven last year. We're now number two uh, in terms of traffic, in terms of residential, uh, you know, resale rental. And we're able to do it because uh, uh, it, when you have no share, uh, the shrinking size of the market doesn't really impact you. You're growing into a, a, a new opportunity. Um, we believe we've built a better product. You know, uh, we are uh, more transparent. We connect the home buyers directly with the listing agent who knows the property best. Um, and we also are bringing a new approach to it where um, when you buy a home, you're not buying uh, just a, four walls in a yard. You're buying into a community. Your kids are going to go to a school. You're going to play in parks. So we're doing a, investing a lot into content around communities, mm. neighborhood schools, and we're putting it all together. And we're getting a very positive reaction. You can see that in our traffic numbers. Andy, want to have you back uh, soon because we need, we need good data, not just opinions about this stuff. Thank uh, you very CEO much, CEO CoStar.